Hello and welcome to this lecture in software engineering fundamentals. Why do you need to know software engineering? Well, software engineering is a complex subject and the reason why we need it is because we want to develop software on time, within budget and to meet the requirements that the users have uh, requested. And this is a bit more complicated than it sounds because software tend to be quite can be quite complex and have very different modules that don't fit together properly many different developers development teams different development cultures etc so it's very easy to miss the mark and if you start developing the wrong things you may have to start over etc that means you may be over time, over budget, and the user may not get what they were requesting from the beginning. And the reason why it's so difficult to get those requirements correct is that we have a loss in communication. The person who captures the requirements may not be the person developing them, developing the features. So the product marketing team may specify a nice swing as you see in the picture um, may have stainless steel mahogany boards etc the salesman of course is interested to sell this product and will therefore maybe add some extra features or make it sound better than it is and may add a sofa a cushion and some form of bell to get service etc when the design team gets this specification they're doing the best they can with what they have and maybe they are trying to reuse something uh, some part of the design and it may not end up the perfect way and the way they expected now the product architecture team they uh, try to modify this design maybe they all have some uh, flexibility in mind maybe they are thinking about well what if this family has many kids and they want to all go on the swing so we'll add three boards and maybe they can all go at the same time when the developing start, development starts, people take shortcuts um, and it doesn't really function the way it was supposed to. And when they release it, they have something that works, they tested it, but it's not as stable as, it, as they would want it to be. Now, what the customer may have wanted was just the simplest of swings, but that all got lost in the communication with all these people involved. So being able to capture these requirements correctly from start is very, very important. Now, capturing these requirements is also difficult because sometimes they are competing or conflicting, uh, contradictory. So they might say, well, the system should be very useful and easy to use, uh, but we should have high performance. It should be fast and uh, reliable and uh, should never crash, uh, but it should be very uh, quick and, and uh, cheap to develop. Now, developing something that is very stable and reliable tends to take more time and therefore more cost. So those requirements that are right there are a bit conflicting. So being able to balance those is very important. And the ability to express requirements is also uh, an uh, important aspect because it's very easy to express something that is difficult to understand, difficult to comprehend. If I say the software should be easy to use, how do I measure that? I could instead say in order to get to certain functionality I should require a maximum of three clicks uh, or uh, it should take a maximum of half an hour for a, a novice person to get used to the system and be able to use it proficiently. So all those things we can measure. Um, and we are trying not to have different interpretation of what the software could do or, or the requirements either. And ambiguous, uh, ambiguous, uh, ambiguous uh, words are very dangerous in this case. And we are trying to capture the functionality that we want to, to have in the software. 
And we have to realize that requirements may change during the development, so having long development uh, cycles may not be the optimal. And in the end, what we are trying to do as developers is to keep it simple. And there is a saying called, keep it simple, stu stupid, uh, also uh, abbreviated as KISS. We don't want to show the complexity to the user, but we want to have a system that functions, that is stable, that is easy to understand as a developer, so another person can take over the code and, and work on it. To reduce this complexity, we have a different number of different tools uh, for, to, uh, to our, uh, at our disposal. For instance, we can use object-oriented systems programming. Um, we use something called Unified Modeling Language, UML, uh, for designing and modeling uh, the software before developing it. We are trying to develop less code because having lots and lots of code makes it difficult to understand. And we're trying to instead use better frameworks. We are trying to use existing designs, uh, structure the code better, reuse code. And for this, we can use something called design patterns, and that will be covered um, in other lectures of this course. And as a developer, there are different roles as well. Um, so a, a development team might have um, a project master or project manager. We may have um, developer system architects, uh, test engineer, etc. It is important that people realize what their role is. And now with new software development cycles or de development methodologies like agile development, there are different types of roles and, and uh, it's more expected that, that people do a little bit of everything, but still there are different rules uh, and roles for this and we'll go through that as well in, later on in this course. So uh, just to go through a few of the development processes that are quite common. So this waterfall development process is quite an old um, development process that was used few years ago um, and there's a clear problem well basically what it says is you have some requirements that the users have some requirements they try to express these to developers the developers then try to make a functional specification out of these then a system design where they design classes class diagrams etc they start developing they test it and then once they have something that works they show it for the users the problem of the of course with this is that the users are not involved and if you had a problem with the functional specification you got something wrong then you may have to go start go back to scratch and, and start all over so there's a two-year void and that's a big problem so instead there are a number of different other development processes uh, there are ad agile development there's evolutionary development iterative development basically they all work so that they you have users involved more frequently they you can show the system for users or parts of the systems to users to get feedback early on and that is the very very important thing so in this uh, evolutionary development process we have black box requirements uh, functional specification all those steps as i mentioned before but they are shorter iterations maybe there's a development phase of only a month or two and then the user gets involved, uh, gets to have uh, their say. So you have system experts that can comment on the software as well. And in the rest of these uh, lectures, I will go through the different um, artifacts uh, involved in all these steps. Now, these, I will go through them as they are meant or as they are defined, um, but typically developers they uh, tend to take shortcuts and that's okay as long as it's understandable and you can convey a design to another developer be sure to not confuse people by taking shortcuts though so thank you for this lecture and uh, hopefully you'll continue watching the other lectures